Hi, this is Ryan Thomas with East West, back with another Composer Cloud tutorial. And today's going to be a really fun video. We're going to be looking at the Cinematic Choirs demo that was written for one of the One Minute Composer Cloud tips. And we're going to really be diving into Hollywood Choirs and uh, the Word Builder in particular. So this is orchestrally a fairly simple piece. So we're kind of going to focus on choir and I'm going to blaze through, uh, you know, the strings, brass and the woodwinds. But there's really not a whole lot that's going on here. So let's go ahead and just start right at the very beginning. And you've got those celli shorts along with the basses, and they are just doubling each other in octaves here. And I've got the short mod patch. I'm using that patch for both of these instruments, and I have triggered the very longest note, the marcato note in the patch, with uh, CC1. So at the very top of the range, you trigger those, uh, the marcato articulation for the basses and the celli. And I'll go, I'll go ahead and let you hear what they sound like by themselves. So that's pretty much gonna be the, kind of the foundation for the rest of the piece. These pretty much just go on. I'm not really gonna come back to these because they just repeat this pattern pretty much through the, through the entire piece. And obviously they're changing with, you know, the chord changes and the key changes. But uh, other than that, there's not a whole lot going on here that is uh, uh, all that complicated. So let's go ahead and check out what the woodwinds are doing. Of course, we've got a lot of doubling going on here because I really just kind of wanted this low brooding, ominous feel. The strings by themselves, the low strings weren't quite enough. So I went ahead and doubled those with the bass clarinet, the contrabassoon, and the contrabass clarinet. So let's go ahead and hear what they sound like by themselves. And once again, I am using the marcato articulation in all of these. These are the key switch patches. Together with the strings, they sound like this. And you can hear how much more color those woodwinds add uh, that just wouldn't be there, obviously, without them. And they really help that line kind of pop out a little bit. And let's go ahead and check out what's going on finally in the percussion section. Uh, this is, again, fairly simple. We're starting off with a gong hit, uh, the Middle Earth Ensemble, and the Lord of Toms patch, along with the, uh, the bass drum, I believe, from... Uh, uh, Hollywood orchestral percussion. So let's see what they sound like. And I've got the Lord of Toms patch and the bass drum uh, playing the same rhythm with the Middle Earth Ensemble just hitting on the one and the three, just adding a little bit more emphasis there. So uh, having gone through all that, let's go ahead and move on to the next section where the choir comes in. And as you can see, I've got the phrases spread out across quite a few different instances of Hollywood choirs. I did that for the purposes of filming this tutorial, but this really is just two different patches. I'm using the men's word builder patch and the women's word builder patch with uh, different phrases and words. So let's go ahead and start at the beginning uh, so that we can kind of hear this choir entrance in context. Okay, so let's go ahead and check out what's going on under the hood here. I'm probably just gonna use the all the, the men's word builder patches because the phrases are identical. I just copy and pasted from the men's to the uh, women's choirs here. So the first phrase that they're saying is evil awakens. And I think I programmed most of these phrases uh, just kind of from scratch because I like to uh, challenge myself and I'm a glutton for punishment. So I didn't use any of the uh, pre-built phrases, which are amazing, but I kind of just wanted to do my own thing here. And uh, you can see the way that I've got the words kind of broken up. This makes sense, you know, e vil a uh, way kens. And I opted to put the K at the beginning of this word rather than at the end of this one. It just flowed better. That's always kind of a challenge is figuring out where you want to put consonants, you know, at the beginnings or ends of your words. You kind of just have to use your ear and uh, kind of figure out what's, what's working best with the, the phrasing. 
I might put the K here, depending on the timing of this particular phrase. In this context, I opted to put the K at the beginning of the last word. So let's also check out the MIDI data here and uh, go ahead and solo our choir. I'm also gonna select the women's choir. And you can also see the way that I have offset the MIDI notes here. And that's gonna be another instance where you're gonna have to just kind of use your ear to time that correctly because you know, the fact is that different phonemes take shorter to sound out. Some phonemes are longer to sound out. So I think in English, uh, like a s phoneme takes more time to sound out than a t phoneme. So obviously a word that starts with s, you're gonna have to give it more of an offset. You know, you're gonna have to put it back farther. Um, and then a word that starts with the T phoneme, obviously you won't have to offset it as much. So those are just a couple principles that you kind of have to use with word builder patches. They are very powerful, but you do have to program them correctly in order to get good results. So let's move on to the next section here. And we'll start back here for context. Let's go ahead and stop there. So a couple things are happening. Obviously the phrases have changed and we're, we've also added the brass, but uh, let's check out what's happening in the choir first. So here they're saying darkness will rise. Not much to talk about here. Um, I think this is fairly intuitive. And let's go ahead and check out what's happening in the brass. I think I've got the brass just doubling the choir. And uh, let's hear what they sound like by themselves. Yeah, and this is just the key switch patch with the vanilla sustain articulation triggered. And I've just kind of used the modulation and expression data to get the articulation that I want. And again, that sounds like this. I tried using a combination of various, you know, short to long articulations using the key switches. I couldn't get something that, that I thought was ideal because I kind of needed this softer entrance, whereas all the marcato and staccato articulations obviously kind of start off uh, fairly percussively, I guess. I wanted more of a swell into each note. So I went ahead and just kind of programmed this by hand and uh, that's the result. It's not perfect, but I think in context, it works just fine, especially with the choir. But uh, yeah, so that's, that's pretty much what the brass is doing mostly through the entire piece. You can see not a whole lot changes here. They're uh, pretty much just doubling what the choir is doing. So let's go ahead and move on from here. Let's go ahead and stop here. Um, I actually don't think really much has changed except that we have added now the uh, timpani. And it's fairly subtle, but I think it is, it is important uh, because you don't wanna keep the same thing going for too long without any changes, it could become boring. So here we're just adding the uh, timpani and I'll let you hear what that sounds like with all the percussion here. Uh, we'll start maybe a bar and a half before that. So the timpani here is pretty much just doubling the Lord of Toms ensemble, as well as the bass drum, just adding some more interesting color in the percussion section. But other than that, not a whole lot changes in this section. And we've actually gone right back to the Evil Awakens phrase, which we have already covered. So let's move on from here. Okay, once again, I don't think a whole lot has changed here. You've still got the same pattern going on in the low strings as well as the uh, woodwinds. 
So there's not a whole lot to talk about here. And we've gone right back to the same phrase as before, but we've just added the word up to the end of uh, the darkness will rise. And uh, again, this is, I think, fairly intuitive. Not much to talk about there. Uh, this next section is where things get a little bit interesting. So let's go ahead and give it a listen and then just, uh, and then just go ahead and break it down. All right. Okay, so this is a really fun one. Uh, let's go ahead and check out what's going on in the choir first. So they're saying shadow is descending, and I was actually really surprised at how how close uh, and, and actually how easy this one was to program. I don't think I, I pulled any words from any of the phrases for this one. This was pretty much just built from scratch. And uh, so they're saying shadow is descending. So instead of having the D here, so instead of them saying shadow is descending, um, I have them saying shadow is descending. And once again, that just kind of worked better with the flow of this particular phrase. And uh, let's actually hear what they sound like by themselves, because once again, I was really impressed with how clearly this, uh, this phrase came through. Yeah, so, and again, uh, your modulation data, your expression data here is also going to be important. Uh, you want to get those swells sounding nice and natural, and uh, in this case, you also want them to have some power. So, in this section, we've also added a melody line here, or something like a melody line, in the high strings. And it looks like, so I'm just doubling the violin two and viola, which is typically something, you know, I really wouldn't do. But in this case, I didn't really have another job for the violas. So I just kind of had them here supporting the violin two in the first octave of this melody. So let's actually go ahead and hear what they sound like uh, just all together with the strings. <laughs> And if you notice, I'm doing a, something a little bit different here. Normally, I would just have my modulation data and the expression data here uh, just pretty much mirroring each other. But in this case, because with these patches, CC1 controls vibrato and uh, CC11 controls dynamics, which is you know basically how hard that bow is pressing on the strings, um, I wanted some exaggerated vibrato. Um, but I didn't want it to be quite as loud as it would be if the expression data were all the way up here. Um, so in this case, I just went ahead and cranked CC1, but uh, left CC11 kind of down here. Besides that, I'm also adding the English horn and the oboe that are just doubling the uh, violins and the violas on the melody. And we'll just let you hear what they sound like all together with the woodwinds. Obviously not very inspiring on their own. I mean, they sound, they sound good. They sound, uh, they sound fine. But they're really just there to add some color to, the, uh, to what's going on in the strings. And uh, nothing really different is happening in the percussion except for, you know, we've changed the timpani note to reflect this uh, key change. So uh, let's go ahead and check out the very last section here. We've got uh, quite a few different elements here. So let's take it one bar before this last section. <laughs> Okay, let's start with choir. And they are saying, take up the sword and fight. All 
All right, let's see what's going on in the word builder. So I'll start off by pointing out that this is another instance where I have opted to take the the last consonant of the first word and put it at the beginning of the second word. And that's because they're saying take cup, the sword and fight. Now, if they were saying take up the sword or something like that, I would obviously need to have the K at the end of the first word. But uh, because of the timing and the phrasing, I want the K exactly where it is. The other thing I do want to go over is that, uh, that I phoneme, and I think I actually programmed this word just from scratch. You can probably find the word fight in one of the pre-built phrases, but uh, I just went ahead for the sake of time and programmed it from scratch. If you're having trouble trying to figure out how to program a word in the Votox paradigm, you know, just say the word, say it very slowly and analyze each phoneme as you're saying it. So for the word fight, I was having a little bit of trouble. So I said, okay, fight, fight. Now, obviously we're starting with the F. So I typed in the F, but for that I, uh, that, that's a little bit of a difficult phoneme because it's kind of a, kind of a compound phoneme in a sense. It starts one way and it ends another, you know, it starts with one mouth shape that then morphs into another one. So you start with the A, uh, but it ends in an E. So it goes, I, and you can see that reflected in the way that I have this programmed. Finally, the last thing I want to point out is that there's really no hard and fast rule that I can give you uh, as regards to, you know, how long you want each consonant to be sounding out in a word. It's really just going to depend on how fast the choir is singing, it's going to depend on the phrasing, it's obviously going to depend on the word, so you're just going to kind of have to use your ear, but obviously, you know, if, let's say that I had programmed this word, and it sounded kind of like they were saying phi, you know, I wasn't getting enough of the T, I would just take this, and I would lengthen it. That would give you more of that T phoneme. Okay, I think that about covers the choir. Let's check out what's going on in the strings. And we haven't really done a whole lot here, um, except to take this melody line and bring it up another octave just to add some more energy and intensity to this part of the piece. And here again, I've opted to keep uh, CC11 kind of low, but I wanted to keep that vibrato really intense, so um, I kind of jacked up CC1. I really just didn't want my strings to overpower the choir, and uh, Hollywood strings can be so powerful at the top of their dynamic range. I really love how dynamic Hollywood strings are. So let's check out what's going on on our brass. And once again, we haven't done a whole lot here, but we have added some trumpets. And I'm just using the key switch patch with the sustain articulation triggered. And that sounds like this. And again, the key here is to just nail that uh, CC1 data and get those swells sounding powerful, but also natural. Okay. On to the woodwinds. The woodwinds are pretty much just doubling the strings. Uh, we've added the flute on top to uh, double violin one. Yeah, again, not too inspiring by themselves, but they add some really, really nice color and texture to the strings, and they help bring out all those lines. And finally, we've got our percussion section. And not much has changed here, but we are slowly adding intensity to the timpani. 
you can see where I am increasing the velocity. And uh, let's listen to the percussion by itself. Okay, and you can see where I, you, I'm, I'm using the uh, timpani key switch patch here. You can see where I triggered that roll to end the piece. And that's actually pretty much it. Like I said, this one from an orchestration standpoint was fairly simple. So let's go ahead and cover the reverb setup. And for those of you who are new to the series, this will be new information, but for everyone else, it's gonna be mostly review. But uh, for the choir, we are using the Davies Choir Impulse. Really beautiful reverb. And I am also sending to the Abandon Abbey Impulse. I just needed uh, a little bit more space than usual for this particular piece. So I wanted uh, something with a bit of a longer tail. And for strings, we are using the South California Hall Strings Specific Impulse. For brass, we are using the exact same room, but it's going to be the Brass Specific Impulse. And for woodwinds, we are using the... Uh, actually, for woodwinds as well as the percussion, we are using the Northwest Hall, the rear room. And then of course, everything except in this particular piece, um, everything is, is also being sent in various amounts to the stage verb, which is a beautiful lexicon emulation within spaces too. So that does it for the reverb. Uh, that does it for this tutorial. And uh, if you guys have any questions, please just let me know in the comments below and I'll try to get to them as soon as possible. Uh, otherwise, thank you so much for watching and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.